Hello to the channel. Welcome back everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all enjoying things and, and so there. Uh, a wee bit of a change of pace here. I'm going to do something a bit different for the content. I've got a lot of stuff on going with podcasts, lineup building, rewards and things. So um, something a wee bit different here. So th this is a, a video for beginners to advance. I think people will all benefit from this in terms of looking at the matrix and then looking at some specific um, players as well. So in terms of the general plans for content, I'm going to try and do some other bits pieces like this. I've got a plan for doing a sort of leveling up video and um, just give people some hints and tips in terms of how to build up a gallery and work through things and things to look out for in terms of seasonal seasonality of cards. Um, in terms of this video though, what I'm going to be looking at is the basics of the matrix um, compared to obviously your normal fantasy football going into how, how things score and a quick explanation as to what the different parts are for, for different players. And then looking at some specific um, types of players or examples for guys who, who do score well or have scored well and then moved clubs or, or the reasons why they're scoring well. Um, I guess the reason I wanted to do this as well was that even when um, I'd spent a bit of time on the platform myself, even after been there like for around about a year then I, I, I'd look at players and I knew they were scoring well but one thing that really never clicked with me was I didn't really understand why they were scoring well and I didn't understand why sometimes then they didn't score well because um, either they moved club or maybe they were taking off set pieces or, or whatever I always thought of set pieces or things like well it takes penalties so you know gets a goal etc but there's other things to consider um, like um, direct free kicks corners um, delivery into the box, all that type of stuff. So I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if anyone has any um, ideas for other content you'd like to see, then then please let me know. And the final thing is, the channel is going pretty well. Um, it's not actually monetized yet, so I think I'm a grand total of eight or 900 quid down in terms of spending money and stuff and um, giveaways, all that type of stuff. That That's not the objective of the channel. I'm not doing this to specifically make money, but if, if the channel does make money at some point, then it will help in terms of doing the giveaways, etc. So if you do enjoy these videos, then please like and subscribe because we're, I think we're about 100 away from the thousand that's needed and a wee bit away in terms of watch time as well. So I appreciate if you do watch any of the videos at all. So anyway, let's get into it. So for the first part of the video, we'll quick chat about um, normal sort of fantasy football scoring compared to obviously the Sorear matrix. Um, I'm going to be using the site and also using Sorear data. Um, don't worry too much if for some reason you, you don't have access to SORAR data. It's just so that we can go into this depth needed when we're talking about the intermediate or um, more advanced type sections and also um, just easier probably to see. Um, all the information or most of the information is still on the site, um, but we'll use some good examples and, and explain it properly. Um, anyway, the, the first thing I want to do is, is have a look at somebody a bit more topical for me, obviously, being... <laughs> Celtic fans, so someone who's um, scoring very well just now and also um, someone who's, who's going to be quite um, a good sort of topical guy to, to look at in this video. So, so Matt O'Reilly, look at the scores, very, very high scores. So for anyone who's new, um, scoring goes up to 100, it's capped at 100. So if guys go ballistic and score five goals, then they can't score more than 100. Um, and I'll explain a wee bit more about the matrix separately, but you want these sort of high green type scores here. Um, in this section, you can also filter to home and away scores as well, which is quite good. And this is all based on, um, basically on Sorare itself. We'll press the wrong buttons again. I'm going to go into um, Sorare data now though, because this is the actual data site and um, what have we done here? there's more access to the actual sort of stats here. So this section called SO5 scores, and then things can you know be expanded upon a wee bit as well. So you've got the graph there, which is quite good. And then you can actually go into individual sort of game weeks and everything here as well. So don't look at the 6-0 against Atletico Madrid quite uh, score there. So generally speaking, if you're coming from like FPL or you come from other fantasy football, then it goes without saying you're usually looking for clean sheets for goalkeepers. You're looking for clean sheets for defenders, looking for defenders that might get goals and assists. You want midfielders who get goals and assists and the forwards who score a lot of goals. There, there will be some nuances to this as well. Um, and we'll, we'll look at specific examples later on in the video. But um, 
the, the problem with a, a traditional fantasy football matrix is it's quite simplistic. So, you know, Trent plays, Trent has a great game, creates loads of chances. Liverpool concede and he gets a yellow card and like on FPL or fan team or whatever, he gets no points. So, um, so there's more performance driven type matrix where you actually get points for doing different things. Um, and you do get guys like this. Matt O'Reilly's been getting goals and assists as well, which is great. Um, but over and above getting goals and assists, um, he actually is quite a strong all-around performer as well. And that's where we're going to go into um, the matrix more itself too. I'm going to highlight some specific examples. Those examples are not um, just tips, but guys who score well on the matrix and explaining um, sort of why they score well on the matrix as well. So first up, I'm going to look at this game against Atletico Madrid. Um, see if we can go right in. And it shows you, obviously, a sort of general breakdown here in terms of what um, Matt's managed to do. So general scores, um, goals conceded um, too. So he's a midfield card. Remember, these do vary a wee bit. So once you're getting right into the advanced side of things, there is a difference between defenders, midfielders and forwards in terms of um, things that, that are scored. So for a midfielder, you get minus two for a goal conceded. Um, he was fouled twice, so he's got um, two positive points for being fouled. Um, he has fouled someone else, um, so he's basically got a, a minus one in terms of um, fouling someone. Uh, minutes played isn't really relevant in so rare. Um, yellow cards, you get a few points taken off for that. I think it might be minus three. Um, error led leading to shot um, is something that comes into play as well for um, sort of defenders and, and goalkeepers especially as well and um, penalty kick missed is usually goes in I think as a minus five but you also get a big chance um, missed as well so so it's, it's quite quite complicated obviously when you go into these different sort of areas um, in this game he won three tackles so one tackle three got nine points double double um, so this is based in net duels and tackles. Um, so again, if you're coming from like FPL or whatever, going like, oh, so we're getting the duels and all that type of stuff. But this is this is really why it's, it's such a detailed matrix. I'm going to give you specific examples of players to show um, how they've scored well or how they haven't scored well after they've moved. Um, so double-double and triple-double and triple-triples, etc. are all based on performance and duels and tackles and all that type of stuff. Block cross, outfield or block. Um, possession based stats here as well. Um, so, you know, you've got um, possession lost. Now, the thing to point out with possession lost is a big, bigger penalty um, depending on possession as well. So, a defender is um, minus 0. 0.6, I think, for possession lost. Uh, midfielder is 0. 0.5 of a point. Forward goes down to, I think, 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.3 or something. So, it's more crucial in different um, positions of the pitch. Interception one, so you can see how O'Reilly's built a big score here. He's you know he's actually had a good all around game. Um, so he has, um, he's got six points for two interceptions. One, he's won six duels. Um, so he's got four point eight. Um, for that, um, in terms of duel lost, you actually score um a bigger penalty for losing duels than you do winning them. So you know it's I think it's quite balanced from that point of view. And he's got possession one there as well. And then you've got the attacking section here. So I'm going to move myself over towards Marata so that we can see this. So you've got shot and goal. Um, basically, a shot and target is three points. Penalty area entries. So people, I used to think this was running into the box, um, but it's not running into the box. Penalty area entry is actually when you, you put the ball into the box and you've got one contact, one contest and big chances missed. Now, I think also on the site, um, they simplify some of this stuff. So we're going to look at the same information basically on um, SORAIR data and drill down into it a wee bit further as well. Um, let's see. Yep, we've loaded up now. So um, we're going to, sort of, as I said, just drill down into this just a slightly further um, and, and go through it. So when we get into attack here, you can actually see there's a couple of bits here that are mentioned that aren't mentioned on. Um, so rare. So you've got big chance created and attempted assist. So this is relevant to stuff like, you know, um, taking set pieces, etc. Um, and the possession based stats here, pretty similar. 
and then I've expanded this a wee bit as well. You'll see we've got um more information in SORA data in terms of how that score's um, made up. So you've got the dev defence section, which is not so relevant for midfielders, but then we've got other information here. So um, 48 accurate passes, so you get 0 0.1 of a point for an accurate pass. Accurate final third passes, um, 21, so 6.3 points for that. Long balls, long pass into opposition, miss pass. And then on the um, attack, it's just expanded slightly there as well. So the, the, the site probably simplifies this just, just a wee bit. Um, think deliberately just um, because of all the information and obviously um, so their data is, is a data site. So we'll go right into this sort of full data um, in terms of how everything is all sort of made up. Flight away from um, Matt O'Reilly to look at a defender. So we'll look at someone from each position now um, and go through the basics and then obviously more of the advanced stuff. Probably a wee bit easier looking at the stats on um, SORAR data, but just so that you can see what everyone can see on the site, I'm um, going to have a quick look at that first. So this guy plays for Bordeaux. Look at the scores. Phenomenal. Um, he's not the most expensive guy in the world, actually, but um, you know his, his scores are absolutely brilliant. If you go in here, that's just on his player page in SORAR, and you go through, look at these scores. <laughs> 98, 100, 99, 92 and everything for a defender. Um, the first thing I would do if I seen a guy like this is I would also go to a sort of sofa score or whatever and just see like how does this guy um score so so well um so sofa score or outside tools are always quite helpful too um you, you know sofa score you've got an app you can um you can you can actually um on the app put on notifications you can see what happens when somebody's like scoring or assisting, etc. Uh, if you look this guy up, then what you'll see is that um, he's on pens. So firstly, he, he's quite a dominant type defender, but also he's on pens. So you can see a lot of those high scores will be coming from um, scoring goals, getting assists, all that type of stuff. But being on pens, um, that's, that's obviously going to be crucially important. Um, if you imagine, if you're playing FPL, then people will migrate towards Trent because you know he takes set pieces and etc. And he, he he gets a lot of assists and he also delivers assists from open play, gets a few goals. But if you're the guy who um actually was um taking penalties in the EPL, say for example Virgil Van Dijk was on penalties for Liverpool, then he would be one of the most expensive or the most expensive defender um on um FPL. So so this guy um scores very 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 well, which is um. Really, really good for him, obviously, and it's a guy who people won't really know, but the so rare cover so many leagues that these guys will, will pop up. I'm not going to go into his data in terms of how he scores, because I'm going to explain that regarding defenders um, just a wee bit separately. Um, and I'm going to throw up another example just now, just in terms of a sort of um, forward, um, so that everyone's got a wee bit of um, an idea of the different positions and different types of guys to, to actually buy. So... Um, sorry, dodgy mouse, you click it. <laughs> Can't click the right buttons. Recording this in the morning. Um, again, Domenico Berardi is a guy who um, takes the sort of set pieces and everything for um, Sassuolo. I know I haven't actually just explained why that's so, so important yet, but I'm going to do that with the data when we do some sort of player comparisons. Um, again, look at his scores. Um, look at all these high scores, doing 90s, etc. So those are absolutely uh, brilliant scores. And he's a guy who's very expensive on the platform as well. A wee bit more expensive because he's sold in bundles. So you can only really sort of buy the full bundle or buy him back from someone who's actually bought the bundle. And then from a goalkeeper's point of view, the matrix is slightly different again. And we're going to explain... Um, the sort of goalkeeper matrix first to so work through from goalkeeper, defender, midfielder and um, forward with some good examples. So Nick College is a guy who um, actually puts in a lot of green scores, um, you know, probably because he, he makes a lot of saves, which is quite interesting. Um, but we want to have a look at, you know, why basically he does that. So first and foremost, for goalkeepers, you want somebody who keeps clean sheets. That goes without saying. Um, the issue, though, is that you do get quite a lot of points for things like saves, etc. So, you know, teams that, that do keep clean sheets, but they're maybe not just completely dominating games and the, the goalkeeper's just doing nothing. 
are quite good to have. Now look at this guy. I've got this guy, and you know his scores are actually really good. Um, so he's 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 a great example of um someone who who scores pretty well. This one actually against PSV saved a penalty. I will pick out this game. He's hit a fifty, which is a reasonable score actually in a game where they've lost um two one. So press the wrong buttons again. So we'll have a look through his scores now. First thing to point out from a sort of um goalkeeper's point of view is you you can have um sort of sort of general things here as well. So you could you know they could get sent off for example. Um they could um concede three goals. So first thing to to point out is that on your FPL etc you know you get points for a clean sheet. The way Sora Air works basically you start on this thing here called the decisive score. So it's 35 points um, and then your decisive score goes up or down based on what you do in the game. So if you get sent off, you go back down to 15. Um, if you get a goal or an assist, then you go up to 60. Um, if you get another goal or assist, you go up to 70, 80, 90, etc. And I'll explain that a wee bit more when we come to sort of Haaland. Um, the other thing for a goalkeeper is if you can see three goals, then that's seen as a negative decisive as well. So it's the matrix is completely different from a normal um, fantasy football matrix where you know you might get certain points for minutes played you might get certain points um, for a clean sheet if you're a midfielder etc but so there you always start on 35 the other thing to point out is if you're on the bench you start on 25 um, so you get less points for coming on but there's no points per se just for minutes I say I'll come back to that a wee bit further when we talk about defenders so um, goals conceded so every time a goalkeeper concedes a goal they get a minus three so he's conceded two in this game so he's basically got minus six but he's made five saves and also um, two of those saves were from inside the box so basically he's getting two points for a save and he's getting another two points because it was inside the box so basically it's minus three for conceding a goal but you get four points for a shot saved within the box. Um, he's also getting some points for a good high claim. So 1.5 points each and there's points for punches, diving saves, catches, um, and then cross not claimed would be a negative one. And sweeper keeper, so we come out, um, sort of win the ball, play it to your own um, player, you get three points for that. So it's quite a nice balanced matrix. Um, you'll see here actually there's, um, there's penalties for losing the ball. So if he's on the ball and he just kicks it to the opposition, then you're getting point three off for that. But you are actually getting some points for accurate passes again. Again, you're penalised more for losing possession than you are for keeping it. Um, see, we've got accurate final third passes as well. So that's where you're playing like a really nice long ball or you're, you're playing the ball into the final third. Um, and it goes to basically um, a player on the same team and no attacking points, which you would expect given that you're a goalkeeper. Um, guys like this are really, really quite expensive in Soria because he keeps some clean sheets but also he faces shots so he racks up a lot of um, scores so you've got your 35 points for starting if you keep a clean sheet you go into 60 points and then these all around or these other points start building up as well which means you can do the big scores really in Soria you, you want guys who score um, pretty highly um, so you know you, 60s etc um are good scores but they're they're not really going to win you um divisions now all black's quite an interesting one everyone thinks oh this guy's probably the goat because you know he um plays for atletico madrid and you know they are quite tight and all that type of stuff the interesting thing with all black is he's probably improved a wee bit now because atletico madrid um do face some shots but there was a spell where they were just so tight where he was just like doing 60s so he's a kind of guy where he kind of does something in the 60s or low 70s um, or he does like a 30, 30, a 35. So he's, 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 a, he's a steady guy and also the, the reason he's quite expensive is because he plays for Atletico Madrid, he plays in all the Champions League games and he plays for his country. So you're getting absolutely maximum utility um, and, and that's part of his, his price. Now he has, he has a good goalkeeper to show um, but I'll give you another example as well of someone who plays in a real dominant team um, and Joe Hart. So again, reasonably good average and he's um, proved a bit recently as well. But Joe Hart never really does a score above an 80. Um, so, you know, we are getting guys like this and then they have value because you can play Joe Hart with one of the Celtic defenders who are quite dominant. Um, but he, he kind of does like a kind of 
a green score, Midland green score, or he does a yellow score. He doesn't get many um sort of boom or bust type scores where one game he hits a hundred, next game he hits fifteen because he's conceded three goals. Um that's a bad example of a Lethgo Madrid game, but that's Champions League and Celtic dominate a bit more domestically. So in terms of goalkeepers to keep an eye, an eye out for, it's always worth looking out with the the normal, if that makes sense. So people always think, you know, I want a what an Allison, I want a you know, somebody who keeps loads of clean sheets. Ter Stegen, you know, Ter Stegen's a great example um, of somebody who's bloody expensive. <laughs> but he, his average is really, really high, basically because Barcelona are pretty tight as well. He has a few games recently where he's done some real peak scores, like, you know, high 80s and 90s. Um, and he's actually pretty good on the ball, so he gets involved a wee bit in the, the build-up too. So he, he's one of the most expensive goalkeepers um on the platform. I'm trying to think of a kind of crap goalkeeper to um give you so that um we can see some for a wee bit of a balance. Um I'm still thinking of a crap goalkeeper. Or even a goalkeeper um even a goalkeeper who's good but plays in a team who probably can see the bit too much. So Georgie Mamardashvili, um actually a pretty good goalkeeper but you'll see so he, he has these really good games but Lots and lots and lots of 13s and 30s and all that type of stuff. And even in these games, he's probably, you know, um, still doing reasonably well, but, you know, they're just not keeping a clean sheet. And, you know, as a result, he's got a pretty low average of 45, you know. So um, basically, he's um, the size of average. He starts in 35 and a clean sheet um, goes in there as well as the decisives. And it's all around scores, it's other scores that make up the points. Only an average of eight, so you know, not not that good. Um, so he's pretty highly priced because he's under twenty three goalkeeper, etc. But we're focusing sort of ma- mostly on the matrix and everything here. So I'm going to move on now to the defenders, and um, we'll pick out somebody who's topical who used to score well, but actually doesn't really score well anymore. So that you can see what you're looking out for are the risks. Maybe if um someone moves, <laughs> big Carl. Um, we're on the Celtic theme here, um, and he's a guy who was you know, very, very expensive, very expensive um, at Celtic, and then he's he's obviously dropped off cliff a bit. So he's had a couple of good scores recently. Um, I think he actually scored a goal in this game. But you'll see scores here, a lot of 30s and 40s, you know, a lot of quite average, low, um, so rare scores. You want these big green type scores. Go back to his Celtic days, so he was doing like 100s, etc., so we're going to um, delve into this a wee bit more and rather than just going through the individual things, I'm going to tell you why um, that is the case and why you should be looking out for these guys who play for maybe Celtic or Benfica or even teams like Man City, etc., who really dominate the ball and dominate the games. So um, these are his scores here and these are the recent scores. So obviously against like teams like Athletic are conceding four goals um, he actually did error led the goal here as well, so that's a pretty rotten score and um, poor performance. What's happened with Starfield is Celtic win a lot of games, especially just domestically, beat a lot of teams, are always dominating the ball in possession. He's gone to a team who are bottom of La Liga. If he'd went to Barcelona and he was strolling about, I'm not saying he's good enough for Barcelona, his scores would have held up pretty well, but that's that's obviously not um what has happened. And um, I'm gonna have a look here and see if we can pick out so this game he actually had um, an assist, so it's probably an unfair comparison, but you see this game here, he started at 35, he's got a 68 all around, so I'm going to use this as an example um, of basically why these guys are sort of gold dust on um, on so rare, basically. So um, you'll see in this game, he's got 10 points for the clean sheet, so that's important. So he started at 35 and then he's in 45. Um, for new people here, just for the beginner section, um, the clean sheet isn't protected. So what that means is if you start with 35 and you get 10 points, you want to 45. And if you have a crap game, you can drop back down to 20 or 25. Um, if you're a, a defender, midfielder, striker, and you score a goal or an assist, then you go into 60. If you have a crap game, you get a minimum of 60. So that's like a decisive protection, as it's called. So if, you, if you're quite new to it, you won't know that. Um, so bear that in mind as well, the clean sheets for defenders 
are not protected. They are for goalkeepers unless they can see three and then they drop back down again. Okay. Um, now he's got 14 points here to clean sheet in a double double. So that's nothing out of the ordinary. He said, um, eight effective clearances. So it's a 0.5 for each of those. And he's a two one tackles. Again, 10 points. Nothing really outrageous. Oh, possession. So he's got 44 points for possession. So hang on a minute. So out of this, 68 all around score, 44 have been in possession and only um, 0.5 are in attack. So I want to focus on the possession based stats here. So he's given the ball away 13 times. Okay, fair does. He's won possession 12 times, 6 points. He's 11 duels won. So obviously when you're playing for somebody like Celtic or if you're playing your Barbie and you play for Bordeaux who are kind of dominating a bit in France or you've got somebody who plays for um, Man City like Ruben Diaz who's, you know, they're high possession based teams. These things like duels, one and accurate passes and all that type of stuff, they're quite easy to rack up. So that's why you're looking for defenders that are not just um, guys who, who, you know, basically take set plays or get on the pens or score a goal from a corner. You're also looking at how they perform overall. So he's 11 duels, one. It's probably been pretty soft duels in a game like this. 135 accurate passes. So you see he's actually racked up 10 points or 11 points nearly from just passing the ball to somebody else. So, you know, get the ball at the back, side to side, side to side, side to side, scores building up. 31 accurate final third passes. So, obviously, in that game, Kilmarnock have been sitting in, Celtic have pushed right up, which means that when he's passing the ball in the final third and he's given the ball to someone, then he's actually scoring even more points for that. Um, accurate long balls, um, six. Long pass into opposition, 18. A good example of this as well was, um, I think, um, Lissandro Martinez, who Ajax was absolutely brilliant. Really good team, really possession-based type team. Um, he was always scoring loads of points for possession. Man, Man United, I know they're not so good, but you know they've not really implemented that same style of playing, and that could be relevant as well. Carter Vickers scored pretty well in this game too, which is it's quite interesting. Um, I'm going to give you um, another example of someone Again, who scores pretty well. One of the leading sort of players on the platform at the moment in terms of under 23s. But I want to explain why he scores so well as opposed to, obviously, these defenders who have loads of possession. So, loads of high scores here. Pretty nice. Um, and I mentioned earlier on, Sugawara takes the set pieces. So, Jesper Carlson used to take the set pieces and basically um, he's, he's buggered off now and Sugawara takes them. So you'll see that he, he gets quite a lot of points from things like penalty area entries. So six points um, for just putting the ball into the box. Um, also, he picks up stuff like big chances created and attempted assists. So say, for example, you've got a guy who takes corners. He goes over, you've had 10 corners in a game. He, he, he crosses the ball over, a guy headers it, he goes over the bar. He's getting like three or four points for that because he's getting points for penalty area entries. And then he's getting a point because he's crossed in and the guys had a, get a shot away. Um, if he gets a shot on target, then it's a big chance created. And he gets another three points for that. So you can kind of see why these guys who take set plays, etc., can become like gold dust, basically. And, um, you know, highest profile example, everyone, if you come from FPL or whatever, will know um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. So he's he gets quite a few sort of high 100s, etc., um, he actually had a clearance off the line, which is another decisive um, in this game. Um, this game against Aston Villa, he's got an assist. Um, so we'll see he's managed to hit a score of 171 minutes, which is actually pretty good. And again, um, guys like this have, you know, good attacking stats. So, you know, six penalty area entries, four attempted assists, and one big chance created. So it's 18 points just from stuff like that. So... I, I, the reason I wanted to go through this, and I know I'm kind of labouring this point, um, but you've come across from, you know, your FPL or you've come across from other DFS, you think, why do people keep talking about set piece takers? Why do people keep talking about these guys who um, take set plays or whatever? And what, what, why is that relevant? But it's relevant to the stats. You've got to remember that, that guys like this are so, so important in terms of their contribution to the game. Um, even Andy Robertson, when, when Trent and Robertson 
play, um, play together. Robertson takes corners from one side or he takes some of the outswinging set pieces. So again, he's a kind of set piece and set piece type defender. And, you know, Trent's get 18 points in that game for attacking. So that's, that's more than you get for a clean sheet, which is 10 points. So I always find that like ultra interesting. And, you know, the guys like Starfelt used to be a huge price because, you know, possession based stats are quite easy to predict for Celtic. You know, the Celtic home games, for example, you say you're playing against even Aberdeen today, the Celtic um, centre backs will probably score pretty highly in that game, unless we have a really random game and we, we, we can see loads of goals. Um, so we're going to move on to midfield now, and the same theme with um, set piece taken, but when you're, when you're, um, you're building teams, um, or you're 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 trying to get um teams for for guys who score really high or build a really good SO five team. That's the name of the um obviously the um competition SO five. That was another thing I was doing. What's this SO five? Um, but here's a guy who, um, Kieran Jusbury Hall, who used to score pretty average and now scores very high. So. You know, the explanation for this is, um, firstly, Leicester used to be in the EPL, so harder competition. Secondly, he was in James Madison's shadow. Madison always scored high. Again, he's the guy who took all the set pieces. He's the guy who took all the corners, the guy who was involved in the build-up and play. You know, so pretty easy to, to see why, um, you know, guys like Jusbury Hall just weren't really as like involved, basically, in the game. You'll see how many, um, you know, sort of general sort of assists and everything he's getting now as well. So we're going to use this one as an example. Um, game against Sunderland and look at his attacking stats. So this guy's went from being a guy who was kind of a wee bit more in and out of the team, playing, getting average scores, and now he's hitting like 90s. So in this game, he's had nine penalty area entries, 4.5 points, two um, points for attempted assist, so one contest, so eight points for that. Pretty good um, possession based um, stats, and actually, he's won a few tackles. So, you know, if you get guys like this who are pretty solid players as well, they're not just your flair players who um, take the set pieces, etc., then that can be quite crucial as well. So, Jewsbury Hall and Matt O'Reilly are quite similar from that point of view because they're not guys that people just run past. They, they put the foot in a wee bit, they're pretty good, solid all around players. So, they're kind of a good balance of a player where they're getting eight points from attack, 4.7, and then 10 points. And then obviously we started on 60 here um, because um, he's got an assist and he's got 29 all around. So you're only 10 away from 100 there, which ultimately is, is what you're, um, you're aiming for in terms of um, so rare. Um, so if you're if you're looking for guys in terms of um, players you would, you would like to buy, then this is a sensible um, sort of route to go down. Obviously these guys are quite expensive, but it's important to understand why they're expensive. <laughs> you know, I always knew Madison was a good player and all that sort of stuff, but you've got to realise like why why are they so expensive? Why why is it um they do all these sort of high peak type scores and then other guys like are just doing, you know, forties and fifties, which you know realistically is not really gonna win you much. Um so this game for Madison Defence, 1-1 one, one tackle, not much. 1.8 points from possession, 17 points from set piece taken, basically. So 10 penalty entries, 3 attempted assists, 6 points. One, two big chances created, 6. So 17.5 points just for crossing the ball into the box or getting good delivery in. People think, well, that's rubbish. You know, that's why would you get all those points for that? But then... Look at Spurs' performance um, away from home yesterday against Wolves. Son hardly touched it. <laughs> he never got involved at all, and that's because this guy wasn't playing, and they missed, obviously, all of that quality and everything that, that, that he has. Um, then if we go into um, sort of somebody else, I was looking at Berardi um, forward, and then we'll use another topical example. You know, it doesn't have to just be set pieces, etc., but, um, you know, Berardi is a pretty similar example because he's a guy who um, is one of the main men for um, for Sassuolo. So this game against Juventus, 4-2, um, he still managed to do an 82, which is, is pretty good. And you'll see we're following a pretty similar theme here. He's a guy, you know, I've just picked, I haven't picked out these games in advance, so it's quite good that this is kind of indicating 
the information that we're looking at. But in this game, it's 17 points for attacking in terms of penalty area entries, attempted assists, big chance created, etc. So sounding like a broken record here, but people are coming across to the sore air and they're, they're thinking, right, okay, I played FPL, you know, um, it's a simpl- simplistic pick up and play type matrix. I know I need clean sheets, etc. I'm just going to get a guy who gets clean sheets. But actually, this is a more detailed matrix where you want to get guys who play in a team where they're quite possession dominant and they're sort of push, pushing up the pitch and they're, 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 they're on the ball a lot or you want to get defenders who take some set plays or maybe the odd one like a James Tavern, T- Tavernier at Rangers. He's not got a card, by the way. Otherwise, we wouldn't be mentioning him at all. Um, Yuan Barbie. Um, guys like Sugawara, who take set pieces. Lower scale examples, probably Hugo CK at Circle Rouge, who doesn't score as well because they're not as good a team as not dominant, but take some set pieces. Moving into midfield, we've got guys even in this picture. Bruno Fernandes. You know, Bruno Fernandes is one of the most expensive players um, on Sorare. Um, and you can see why he's so expensive um, because firstly he gets lots of goals and assists but he also takes all of the set plays as well so look at his scores I mean that's just like absolutely phenomenal uh, he's got one goal against Fulham which I think was actually from a set play as well um, I think it, if you're coming from FPL and you're pretty good at it um, you'll probably understand this stuff as well because people do talk about stuff like expected assists etc so you know how if you're taking set plays, you, you've got a better chance of getting a goal and assist. But in this game, he's at 17 points from um, basically penalty area entries, attempted assists, shots on target, that type of stuff. Um, and then the final example I'm going to go into is Haaland. Um, Haaland is a guy who is still really expensive in so rare for various reasons. Obviously, he's a superstar, brings a lot of demand. He scores loads of goals. It's really fun. Uh, he's young, so you get to use him in the under 23s, etc. as well. Um, but in terms of his scores, he does do a few big 100s because sometimes he has games where he just goes bonkers. But he's a bit of a 60s peddler, a 60s and a 70s peddler in general. And then the games where he doesn't score, he doesn't do anything. So you imagine this was Berardi or this was Cezinha or this was somebody who takes a set plays. They don't really do 40s. They really do. They do. If they don't have a good game, they do 50s. So they're useful even if they don't. Whereas Haaland's a bit like a sort of jumped up Jamie Vardy, you know, thinking like um obviously with FPL wise, you know, if you didn't score you weren't getting any points. You didn't really create many assists or anything like that either. Um but from Haaland's point of view, most of his points are based on scoring goals. So you see this game here, um you know, basically he's getting negative all around. So this is what I was talking about earlier. If you score a goal, you get a minimum of 60. Even if you're on the bench, if you start on 25, you come on, you score a goal in the last minute, you jump up to 60. So the decisives are protected. And I'm not going to go into the whole matrix about how you move up and down because, you know, if you're if you're an intermediate or advanced, you'll kind of know how the matrix works. Um, if you're a beginner, um. It's probably I don't want to boggle your mind just now. What I want to do is let you know what are the right types of guys you want to buy and why you want to buy them. So Haaland, obviously, you know, if you can afford them, then that's great. Um, he's actually main points that he gets um, out with scoring goals or things like shots and target, you know. So score a goal, three points for shots and target. But then he's went through a spell where he's loads of huge chances missed. So you get minus 20 for four big chances missed. So every time you miss a big chance, you get minus five. But Sora are still giving him a 60 because even though when you balance out all these points here, um, even though he's actually on a minus 10 for these points, he's protected and he's still given a 60. So he, he's obviously a good guy to have. But the interesting thing is that often you get guys like Berardi um, who um, Cezinha, who nobody will really know if they watch this video, and they'll be like, who's, who's Cezinha? But I just look him up. You know, he takes like set pieces, he takes the penalties and everything for Diageo. Um, if he has a bad game, he hits like a 50, 55 and stuff, which is quite a useful score. Whereas Haaland has a bad game, he hits like a 30 or whatever. So that's where it's um, a, a big difference. And again, the reason I wanted to explain this is because even after a year been on so rare, I wasn't really aware of this stuff. I knew there were guys who were scoring pretty well, 
but I didn't understand why they were scoring very well. I knew Trent scored very well. I knew everybody really wanted to get a Trent Alexander-Arnold. I knew that Bruno Fernandes was a monster. You know, all that type of stuff. But there's only a few guys in the, the actual world, basically, um, who maybe don't um, take like set plays, etc. Don't, um, you know have just like heavy dominance just of the ball at the back or whatever who who just are absolute monsters and you know Kylian Mbappe well everybody will know him he's a hat trick at the weekend 80 decisive 24 all around so he's probably rinsed someone so he's 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 getting points for things like duels one etc um, and there is a flip side of this um, too that if you get um, guys for teams who are pretty average, then they're going to get hammered. So they're going to start getting negative points for a lot of this stuff. So there's six points from possession. So there's five shots and targets. So 15 points for that. Um, it's a couple of penalty area entries, actually. I wonder whether he's been taking some set pieces. Or it could just be that he's running down and passing the ball into the box. It doesn't have to be a set piece. But out his all-round scores, 16 points for attacking. But um, 15 of those are from shots on target. So... Um, and the final guy I want to highlight, you know, because he's probably been the gold star, um, gold standard in terms of the, the matrix known as probably the best player ever, likely, but also the best player like on Sora is Lionel Messi, you know. Um, you know, look at these scores, like hundreds, etc. And you know, people are saying he wasn't really on form, etc. And, and so that's a laugh, but. You know, even if you go back further than this, um, go back to all time scores. Look at <laughs> that's just mental. I mean, look at that hundred, 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 a hundred. Like that's just absolutely crazy. Um, so kind of go back um, as far as we can. Look at one of these hundreds and see if we can. You know, obviously there's these games where he's scoring hat tricks and stuff, but why can't I pick out a game where maybe he's hit a high score? But um, so it's one against Brest there actually. So uh, he's hitting eighty seven. Um, but he's only had one assist. So, so you know, guys like this, you, the, the real value of them is that you can still do a huge score even just with one goal or an assist, whereas, you know, if this was Haaland, if you wanted him to do an 80 or a 90, you'd, you'd need to score a hat-trick. So no real points for general, no real points for um, the other sort of categories as well, defence. Um, he's got a few points for accurate passes, etc. but all his points are going to be attacking. So, you know, um, shot and target, um, attempt to assist, penalty area entries, that type of stuff. And actually, he's a bit of a, a sort of, not as many in this game, but he is a bit of a dual monster as well when he's really on form, full flow messy, because he's getting the ball and he's just he's just rinsing guys, just like, you know, goes by guys like they're not there. You know, remember seeing a game where he was like, he was half time and he was in 40, and I was thinking, like, this is never going to be a high score. And the second half, he get the ball, and every time he get the ball, just run by two or three guys and all of a sudden bang he was on like fifty or sixty because you know he was he was just annihilating people um left, right and centre. So we've kind of went through a wee bit from the beginner to the um sort of intermediate and also to the advanced side of things. If you're um really into the so rare and you're really going to be spending a good amount of um, money on players or whatever, you've really got to consider this type of stuff, you know, um in terms of how you construct a team if you've got like a Joe Hart and a Cameron Carter Vickers, that's a nice sort of defensive side of things. You know, you've got um if you keep a clean sheet, you're getting twenty five points for Hart for a clean sheet and ten for Vickers, so that's thirty five. Plus you're getting the all around points and everything for Vickers. Then you put in a Matt O'Reilly or a Dewsbury Hall or um somebody in midfield who's taking set plays. You know that even if they don't get a goal or an assist, they're probably gonna score in the fifties. And then you you go up front and you've got guys like Berardi, etc. On the flip side of things, just to show you the, the alternative example, and he is still very popular, um, but he doesn't do a lot in terms of um, the AA side of things. You've got Kyogo Furashi, so, you know, really pretty expensive because he's he's a consistent goal-getter, but you'll see he doesn't do that many hundreds. Um, Celtic do have some home games where I change up the tactics a wee bit and maybe he drops in a bit, but... Um, he plays a lot as a sort of penalty box type striker. He came on this game against Ross County. This game against St Mirren, he started but didn't really actually get a goal and assist. So again, he's one of these guys where you know 
it can it can be a wee bit more annoying because you know you do a big score and you think oh if I get a fifty I'm going to be in the top twenty here, um and then he doesn't score and when he doesn't score he doesn't really contribute as much. And then people will say why is this guy like three hundred quid or whatever, but you know he's a reliable scorer. He he scores a lot of goals per season. Also he plays at Celtic and if you want to get five Celtic guys out then you've kind of got to have the guy who scores goals. And, and Haaland is pretty similar as well. You know, if he scores one goal and he hits 60, that's not going to win you many divisions. But also, if, if Man City bash somebody up and Rodrigo does 100 and everything, but then you put in somebody else up front or whatever and, and, and they, they don't have a good game, then, you know, you've, you've just busted your stack. So sometimes people do that. Sometimes maybe people just say, I'm not playing Haaland. I'm going to play like a Griezmann or I'm going to play somebody else. I'm, you have, I'm an all star. I've got the luxury of having Messi and everything. They're a nice luxuries to have, but that would just explain how you you can kind of build the teams in there. So, if you're watching this and you've made it to the end, thanks very much for watching. I hope you find this useful in terms of the types of players you really should be looking for if you want to get right up there in terms of the divisions. Um, please do like um or subscribe or both. Why not just do both? and support the channel um, if you have any other ideas for content etc or any questions in this then then let me know I've been rambling on now for about 45 minutes but I really wanted to go into depth about how people actually manage to construct these big scores rather than just saying I could just go and buy you and Barbie or just go and buy Messi or just go and buy somebody like that you know it's important to understand how they construct those scores so that you can um, build your gallery and also people also say to me also, also, also. <laughs> How come Starfelt was like 300 quid with Celtic and now he's went to Celtic Vigo and he scored a rubbish? Well, he's went from a team who are bashing up everybody every week. Um, he's getting quite good possession-based stats because he's always on the ball and he's running the front foot and all that type of stuff. He comes up with odd goal and assists, but it's mainly based on performance. And he's went to a team who are on the verge of relegation. So... You know, if he'd went to a Real Madrid, if he'd went to a Barcelona, if he'd went to a Man City, then he would still be getting good stats for stuff like this. But Starfield obviously isn't good enough to play for teams like that. And that's why when he's moved, he's dropped so drastically. So it can be a blessing and, and it, it can be a, a negative point if you get one of these guys like Sugawara or whatever. You know, I've got like BLL Canus, which has been, been excellent and I'm just going to keep him because he's so young. And but if he moves, then you know, might go off set pieces or might even become more of a guy who's um, at a bigger club and he's on the bench and he, he'll be less useful and his price will, will change dramatically. Um, so you have got to be careful with that. But on the flip side, if you get a Sugawara a few years ago, you bought him, you're sitting on him, you know he's a really good player, you know he's capable, but Jesper Carlson's taking the sets. You know that when Jesper Carlson goes, then you've won a watch. You've got one of the best under 23s defenders that you can get anywhere um, and, he, and he's so reliable because he's going to put in some of these stats every week just based on taking the set plays and dominance of games and you can um, sift out the fixtures so anyway I'm going to shut up now thanks very much for watching and we'll have more content coming back again soon